if K is thermal conductivity of an insulated material and H naught is the heat transfer coefficient from the surface to air, what would be the critical thickness of insulation for the sphere equal to? What about the cylinder? So it wants you guys to calculate the thickness of insulation. Sorry, critical thickness of insulation. Main word was critical and I forgot it. Critical thickness of insulation, okay? We need to do that for the sphere and for the cylinder. I'm gonna start with the cylinder. I think it's gonna be easier for you guys to pick up on what we're trying to do with the cylinder. Where is my graph? There you go, there's my graph. All right, so letter D. We're looking for the critical uh, thickness, okay? What is that related to? Let's think about our cylinder first. And I'm gonna, you might not remember this, but the thermal resistance for conduction of a cylinder is natural log of R2 over R1. Remember that? Divided by two pi KL, right? And that would be related to, we had an R1 here, and then we had an R2 there. And our R1 is just telling us where the cylinder begins and R2 is telling, telling us where it ends. And for convection, if you guys remember, one for convection, is just one over H naught area, right? Surface area. And in this case, surface area of a cylinder is two pi R2 times L. Okay, what, what you guys need to understand when they're looking for the critical thickness is the following, check it out. See that, as I increase my radius too, that is, as I make the cylinder bigger and bigger, I'm increasing my resistance conductivity, right? That's straightforward. As I increase the natural log, I'll be increasing the resistance for conductivity. However, as I increase my R2, I'm also decreasing the resistance for convection, okay? So because the sum of resistance, that is the overall resistance, the, the thing that matters, Right, is the sum of conduction and convection, then there will be a point in which increasing my radius will be beneficial if I want to have an insulator material. And at some point it will not be beneficial. So let's I'll, I'll actually graph this out for us for it to make a bit more sense. Okay. So let's first look at the green, the green trend here. The green trend is the convection trend. If our radius is very small, as our radius is smaller and smaller, this is R2 here, we're looking at R2 on the X axis, and we're looking at the sum of, uh, actually not sum, we're just looking at the resistance on the Y axis, and I don't have values on the Y axis on purpose, okay? So for values that are very small, what, what's happening is that our area is becoming smaller and smaller, so much so that if we have uh, theoretically no area and there's no way for convection to take place, so there won't be any heat transfer, right? Resistance is gonna be maximum. So if we have a very small area, the resistance due to convection is very big. However, if we have a very small area, the resistance due to conduction is very small, right? And then the sum of Rs, which is represented by the yellow line here, is gonna be the sum of these two graphs, the yellow, uh, the green one and the blue one, right? And you know that this graph, it decreases, to a certain extent and to a certain point, and then it increases again. So I have the graph on its own, or I used to have the graph on its own down here. There it's, it's gone too. Everything's going away. Okay, but the important thing here is to know that this guy is decreasing, the yellow one is decreasing, and then at some point it begins to increase again, and it's gonna keep increasing hereafter, right, into infinity. At this point in which we have this turning point here, this is where we have our, our critical. Okay, so know that if we are below the R critical and I increase the thickness of my cylinder, I'm actually decreasing its resistance, its thermal resistance. Okay, so if I, maybe I, I just doubled the thickness, but I just decreased the resistance. I didn't increase the resistance. If, however, I am above the R critical, then increasing the thickness will result in an increase of resistance. All right, so that's quite interesting and it's a very useful concept if you're looking. Um, for insulators or if you're trying to get conductivity in a material. And for those of you who are savvy about calculus, you've know that 
we can take the derivative of this guy here. And whenever the derivative becomes zero, that will be exactly the point in which we find our R critical, right? We're gonna have a negative derivative until we get that point. And from that point onwards, we're gonna have a positive derivative. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to der derive the sum of R's in respect to R2 and make it equal to zero to find what is our critical radius. So let's do that. Let's do that mathematically now. I'm gonna derive the sum of R's in respect to R2, and I'm gonna make that equal to zero. So I'm gonna be deriving the natural log of R2 over R1 divided by two pi K L in respect to R2, plus I'll be deriving the, in respect to R2, the one over H naught two pi R2 times L. Okay, and I'm making this equal to zero. So first things first, I'm gonna split this guy up into two natural logs. So zero equals the derivative in respect to R2 of the natural log of R2 divided by two pi KL minus two R2 of the natural log of R1 of two pi KL plus the convective part of this guy, which is literally just copy paste of what we just did before. One over h two pi r two l. Okay. Now the next thing to note is that although r one is not a constant, it is a constant in relationship to r two. Right? It doesn't matter how r two changes. R two doesn't care. R two is not going to change him as r r two r one is not going to change when r two changes. Right? So. As far as R2 is concerned, this is a constant, so the derivative is zero. So we only need to, need to derive the first two, the, the outer expressions there. So I'm gonna have that zero as equal to, what's a, this is all a constant in relationship to R2. And this guy here is just one over uh, R2 to the minus one, right? So that would just be one over two pi k L R2 to the minus one. Plus this guy over here, we're gonna have R2 to the minus one. So if we derive that, we're gonna have negative R2 to the minus two. So that positive becomes a negative and we have R2 to the minus two. And we have H naught two pi L. So therefore, H naught two pi L R two squared has to be equal to two pi K L R two. Two pi L two pi L R two R two squared. R two critical equals K over H naught. Okay, so as long as the outer radius of my cylinder is greater than K over H naught, then if I increase my R, I'll be increasing my resistance. However, if the outer radius of my cylinder is smaller than this ratio here, then by increasing my K, Oh, sorry, my radius, I'll be decreasing my resistance. It's quite interesting, isn't it? So that will be the answer for the cylinder. So, but we still have the sphere to do, right? So let's do the sphere. So the idea is exactly the same. Everything is ex exactly the same, except that the equations for the sphere are different, right? The equations for conduction and convection. Well, the equations are the same, just the, the, the shapes are different. So end up being different, right? So R2 minus R1, if you guys recall, 
4 pi 4 pi k r2 sorry 4 pi k r2 times r1 and for convection it's the same thing it's one over the h naught times the area but the area of the sphere is 4 pi r2 squared okay remember that this is like a cylindrical shell and then R1 is this one, and R2 is that one. Right, once again, the same thing occurs, right? One thing will be favored. One thing, the, the increase of R2 here is going to be decreasing the resistance here. And the on this side here, the increase here is going to be increasing there. Sorry, the increase there is going to be increasing here. OK, so they are kind of competing in a way. So what I'm going to do is the same thing. Mathematically, I'm going to take the derivative and set it to zero, the derivative of the sum of r's with respect to r2, and set it to zero. And that will be, um, let's go ahead and split this into two. One will simply be r2 over four pi k r2 r1. And the other one will be negative derivative of R1. Same thing. Pi K R2 R1 plus the convective component, which is Okay, so know that on this case here, what's gonna happen is that R2 gets eliminated from this equation and R1 gets eliminated from this equation. So again, as far as R2 is concerned, this is a constant, right? It's not changing. R1 is not gonna be changing with R2. So that means that zero equals. Um, on this case here, we have r2 to the minus one, so the derivative will be negative r2 to the minus two. And over here we have two to the minus two, so the derivative will be negative two to minus three. Yeah? Let me get rid of that. Can't get rid of all that. So on this side here, I'll have Negative with the negative, there'll be a positive. So it goes back to positive. R2 to the minus two or pi k. And over here, I had a positive, so it's gonna become a negative. Negative R2 to the minus three or pi h naught. And we also have the two. Therefore, Four pi h naught r two to the third equals two times four pi k r two squared. So what can we eliminate? Four pi r two squared with r to the one. That means that r two critical equals two times k divided by h. So this is the one for the sphere. Same thing applies, right? As long as my radius is greater than this, my outer radius, then by increasing my radius, I'll be increasing the resistance. If I decrease my radius, I'll be decreasing the resistance. However, if my res radius is smaller than this critical one, increasing my radius will decrease the resistance, not increase it. 